Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Gizmo Joe. Today we're going to be taking a look at something a little different today, and that's uh, basically video game emulation on an Android tablet. Now, this particular Android tablet is the Lenovo Tab A2. It's the 7-inch model. came out a couple years ago. It's got a MediaTek processor, 4-core, running at 1.3 gigahertz and 1 gigabyte of RAM. This is definitely a budget tablet by all, uh, by all means. Uh, it's not going to do all that much. You can do some web browsing. Uh, it does play some X265 video, but that's pretty much the extent of what it can do. Now, I've used this in the past to test some other things, most notably the 8-bit Doe Bluetooth controller. If you haven't checked out that video, you can have a watch now. Uh, but one of the things I want to take a look at today is the DIG front end for Android devices. If you don't know what DIG is, basically it's a front end for your video game emulators and your ROMs. Now, if you're saying to yourself, I don't know what a front end is, well, basically it's a piece of software that just puts all of your stuff in one place. And basically what I mean by that is that DIG will essentially scan your device, whether it's a phone or a tablet, look for any and all ROMs for pretty much, I think there's 86 different consoles that are supported with this guy. It will essentially scan them all and it will put them all in one place. So as you can see here, this is the main menu of DIG. I've already set mine up and I've only put 80 games on here, and uh, but it breaks it down by system. So I have 10 different consoles on here. Like I said, this particular front end supports 86 I believe and there are 80 games here it breaks it down by genre collections etc there's also a pretty robust options menu now what you can do is you can manually scan for new ROMs uh, you can also change the themes there's a bunch of different themes that you can use with this guy uh, you could also download uh, metadata like game covers and screenshots and stuff like that so it's pretty cool if you've used RetroPie before or something similar uh, then you'll probably be familiar with this but basically Basically, this is probably one of the best front ends for an Android device. So let's just quickly run through how it works. So if I hit systems, you'll see this menu here. Now, um, I realize it could be a little bit hard to see because my screen's washing it out a bit, but you can see I've, I've loaded a bunch of games from a different bunch of different systems here. So you've got Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, I've got some N64, some Nintendo, PlayStation, so on and so forth. If I click on, say, like Game Boy Advance, what that's going to do is it's going to open up this menu and you're going to be able to see all of my games. Now, uh, when you first import these it won't have any of the box art or anything like that and you'll have to just manually scan for that but like let's say I wanted to know more about Metal Slug here and what it does is it comes up gives you a little screenshot as well as the box art it will tell you where the ROM is uh, I have mine stored on the SD card in here and it also gives you a little synopsis it tells you who made the game uh, you know when it was released all that good stuff and all of this information is coming from the games database so uh, pretty cool if we go back again let's just check out a different system let's say uh, I don't know let's go with N64 so you see I've got a bunch of N64 games here let's say I just click on Goldeneye and again, it gives us the box art, it tells us about the game, uh, it tells us who published it, when it was released, blah, 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 blah. And um, what you do is you just hit that little circle there, that little play button, and it will launch the game. Now, there's a couple things you need to know before you start using this. The dig front end does not have any emulators built into it. Um, you have to essentially download the emulators yourself. Now, for instance, let's say PlayStation Portable, so PSP. The, probably the only emulator that you're ever going to use is PPSSPP. Now, you can go ahead and download that separately, and then up here in the three little buttons here, you can scroll down to essentially Manage System, tap on that, and then basically it will have so I've already got PPSSPP set up here but it would have a list of different emulators so if you don't have an emulator let's say for instance um, you know uh, let, let's just go to turbo graphics because I know I don't have an emulator set up for this one let's say we wanted to play air zonk it will click on that and I'll hit yeah I want to play and it will give me this warning and it will say hey look your emulator is not installed can't play this game so um, okay so I just hit cancel now I'd have to go ahead and do that now 
what if I didn't hit cancel, if I hit OK, what it would do is it would bring me to uh, Google Play and it would allow me to download an emulator that would work for that particular system. So it's pretty cool because it's pretty easy to set up. It, there's not a whole heck of a lot to worry about. Um, a lot of these emulators I already had on my system on this little tablet. So what was really cool about Dig is that if it recognizes an emulator that you're using already, it will automatically assign that emulator to the system. So what I mean by that is like, so Game Boy Advance, for instance, I had um, John GBA, which um, is a great, really no frills, awesome little Game Boy Advance emulator on here already. Um, and when I installed Dig, uh, it automatically saw that John GBA was already installed on my device and set that as the default emulator, which is pretty cool. Now, what's also really cool about this is that you can download a whole bunch of different emulators and you can mess around with them and you can see which one you like. You know, different emulators do things a little bit differently. They have different features, et cetera, et cetera. So if you're curious about messing around with uh, different stuff, you can. Um, let's just fire up a game just to show you guys how this works. Um, let's say, well, let's go Metal Slug, because Metal Slug is a good time. Now, obviously, I, I, I'm using the on-screen controls here. So again, this is just from John GBA. Um, if you had a Bluetooth controller, which I highly recommend you using anyway with a lot of these console games, because, um, you know, it's just they're designed for that, and it's a whole heck of a lot easier. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I can't stand the on-screen controls. Um, I find that my fingers tend to drift when there's nothing tactile there. But anyway, I'm probably going to be terrible, so just bear with me. Just want to give you an idea of how this guy works. So as you can see, uh, it's emulating it pretty good. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, this is pretty much full speed. Uh, let me focus on the screen here so you guys can see this a little bit better. There we go. Okay, so um, if we want to back out of the game, basically all we do is we hit the little back button here. Oh, no, sorry. <laughs> Forgot. Again, it's depending on your emulators. So uh, if I want to back out of this one, John GBA, what you do is you hit the three little, uh, the little hamburger icon up at the top, and you're going to hit close. And it's going to say, do you want to close this? And I go, yep. And basically, it brings me right back to Dig. It also asks me if I want to rate the games. Uh, I always just hit Cancel, uh, but feel free to rate them if you want. Obviously, that's how um, you get these little ratings up at the top. Uh, if you can be bothered, give it a rating. If not, don't worry about it. Just hit that Cancel. Uh, but as you can see, it does a pretty good job of essentially organizing all your games. I've had a couple issues with box arts not downloading. So, for instance, Virtua Tennis here on PSP uh, didn't download. And I think there's some others. Um, I want to say maybe Nintendo as well, I think, was missing DuckTales or something like that. So a couple issues here and there. But by and large, uh, it's pretty good. And um, I, I think you guys, if you're looking for a front end, something to essentially organize all of your ROMs and emulators on your Android device, Dig is the way to go. Now, what's also great about this is that it is free. So there is a paid version. I think it's $3.99 or something like that. And it gives you a couple extra features, but I'm not even really sure what they are because the free version seems to pretty much have everything that you could want it to do um, already ready to go. So um, I don't know if somebody knows, uh, you know, what, what the advantage of the premium version of Dig is. Definitely let me know down in the comments. But other than that, that's going to do it for this week. Um, thanks for watching, guys. And I will be back next week with another video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. This is Gizmo Joe signing off.